All right, today we'll get on with our training. It's going to focus on assuring that our business information on Google is relevant, engaging, and available. Ron Brown, our trainer today, is a local internet marketing expert that loves to foster companies beginning their journey into digital marketing. He served his Southern Utah clients with online marketing advice for over 12 years and teaches students, business owners, and organizations various strategies to engage with their ideal audience with the powerful tools in the digital marketing realm. Among various certifications, Ron is the Google Professional Certified in AdWords and Google Analytics. He currently serves, oh, I touched his computer. He currently <laughs> serves clients in Utah, Nevada, and Arizona from his home-based office. He works as a digital account executive for Thrive Hive, which is an internet marketing and technology company based in the Boston suburb of Quincy, Massachusetts. How often do you go there? No. Never. Darn. Ron's love for marketing also has also led him to be the board chair for Arts to Zion. This local organization engages with tourists and locals to promote arts, history, and culture in Southern Utah. His list of nonprofit involvement also includes graduate and board member of Leadership Dixie, as well as board member of Leadership Academy. Ron and his wife, Lynette, along with their young family, moved here from Indianapolis. Oh, is that why you guys get along? Midwesterners, yeah. huh? 16 years ago, and currently live in Dixie Springs in Hurricane. They have a very busy life with their sons, Alex, 18, and Corey, 21, and their new daughter-in-law, Taylor. They love Southern Utah and the opportunities for recreation, education, and living life to its fullest. Please welcome Ron Brown. <laughs> green light now is that better okay all right again uh, my name is Ron Brown uh, I work for a company called Thrive Hive um, I mostly we do we are headquartered in Boston but I work out of our office in Summerlin mostly and from home so most of the time I'm in my pajamas working at home so kind of nice um, so today what we're going to talk about is um, a Google program called GYBO so does anybody know what GYBO stands for any guesses Pam. <laughs> okay. Yay. Okay. So, um, so basically today what I'm going to go through is two different things. One is a slide presentation that was got kind of a cheat sheet on some steps that I teach on just general um, search engine optimization techniques that you can do in order to help your website and your social media and things work better for you. So, um, I do have today two of my super nerds. I'm kind of a nerd. They are excellent nerds. And staff. So I have, I have Jace and Tim from my office down in Summerlin that are up here to field um, some of the high level questions if you've got some, some real tough ones. So, um, so I'm going to start starting. So, we really are in, a, in an age where technology is amazing. So did you know that, the, that when we put a man on the moon, basically the computing power that was, was used in order to put that man on the moon is, is less than the amount that you've got in your cell phone today. So it's just everything is, is, is growing at an exponential level technologically. So, um, so this is in 2005, April inauguration. And so if you look at this again, there's there's a few of these flip phones. Does anybody still use a flip phone? <laughs> so, you know, fast forward to a few years later, and, and look at this. I mean, yeah. we, we record everything. So, you know, I was at a wedding this weekend, and, and for the daddy-daughter dance, there were probably 150 people, and 150 phones are all recording that, that dance from, from different areas. Sorry, I did your quietly. Life might be low so okay yep so I want to kind of go through just a real quick um, history of advertising so you look at um, changing strategies and I call this kind of the madman way so um, 
you know, before you had, you had television, if you could afford it, you had radio advertising, you had magazines and billboards and newspaper and things. And really, um, we rapidly progressed through a bunch of different steps. And this is really just an online map. You know, there's all these little tiny logos of, of different areas that you can advertise now. So going from really where, where a small business had five or six different ways that they could advertise, now you've got To, to put kind of your best foot forward and concentrate um, on what works best for you. So, um, so I want to real quick before I get started on the on the Google um, presentation, I want to kind of break down the anatomy of a search engine page. So you basically got three different areas that you need to concentrate on in order to, to show up well on a search engine page. So you've got the paid listings. Those are referred to a couple different ways. They're referred to as pay-per-click or they're referred to as SEO. Um, basically, this is a way that you can control what Google shows for you and where you'll show up and you basically pay for that by the number of people that click on the ad on your website or your organization. The next area is what we're going to concentrate a lot of time on today, and that's the map listings or the Google business listings in the middle. And so these are, are getting really mobile focused. So it used to be that you know, you'd get like the most um, the most popular listings. Now a lot of times if you're looking for pizza, they'll show the closest ones to you because they realize that you know you don't want to drive for three hours to get into the best pizza. You want So then also on the, on the Google listing, you've got what's called the organic or the natural listings. And so, um, so these are a little bit harder. These are where Google kind of crawls through the content that you've got on your site in order to, for them to decide who is authoritative and who is relevant to the search. And so those two things are um, important because authoritative means that you're like the expert and you're referred to, um, you're referred to regularly by other industry sites that are that are um, authorities and things so you know maybe you're an attorney and you've you're on um, lawyers.com or something like that that's considered an authoritative site but you all it also needs to have relevant content so in this case it's a it's a plumber and so you may be looking to remodel your bathroom and so the search term that you type in what Google wants is for you to find information that's relevant to your exact search so really what you, what you want in, in the optimum situation is when somebody does a search for your business or your organization that you want to show up in all these spots. And if you show up in all these spots, you get what's called the halo effect. And the halo effect is that if you're in the paid listings and you're in the maps and you're a couple spots in the organic listings down here, all of a sudden you're the guy or the girl, sorry. <laughs> you're the person. You're the person that's able to fulfill their needs. And so... Um, so you need to have components of a lot of this, th this in what you do. It doesn't mean that you have to, but it's just going to work better for you to put a better foot forward when consumers are looking for what you, what you do. Any questions on this? No questions? Wow. Okay, so I'm going to get started on the, on the, Go it's the Google My Business um, presentation. So basically, um, when you look at, um, a Google My Business listing, it's really for you to connect with your customers. And so Google My Business needs to be um, kind of a living, breathing entity that you latch onto with your business and put as much relevant information in there as you can. So does, is there anybody here that knows for sure that they have claimed their Google Business link for their business? Couple? Okay. Um, so... So basically, again, when you, look at, when you look at the number of people that are doing searches on it, you've got about 1.5 billion people in an average year that are going to look for local businesses. And so map listings are really relevant and important because you've got to have information there that's going to drive the consumer to your business and give them the information they need at the moment that they're looking for it. Um, so you also want to make sure that the that the information that you have on your business listing 
Yes. says something about my Google listing and I need to call them. Okay. What are they trying to do? Scam me that's into not, a bunch of money? That's not Google. So that's, those are scam companies that are calling you and trying to get you to pay for what I'm showing you how to do for free. Okay, so, yeah, I so just be careful. Uh, 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 any yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, don't, don't answer those types of things. It's real common. I have a lot of clients that, that will call me and say, yeah, I've, I've signed this contract with Google in order to get my listings and it's only $150 a month and I signed a 400 year contract and I'm so excited and um, they're, they're scams. Google won't, Google will communicate with you through this. You have, you have ways to ask questions and things but they're not necessarily gonna call you on the phone unless, you know, I do have clients here in town that are spending $30,000 a month and yes, Google loves talking to those people, but for Google Maps, they're not gonna, they're not gonna call you. Um, any other questions before I move on? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Organizations, um, businesses, um, like individual services. I'll, I'll get there. You're cutting ahead. You're cutting ahead. Google Slap? Have you heard that term, guys? Google Slap? I, I haven't heard anything that sounds like I've heard of people getting blacklisted yes. for different things, for like duplicate Slap. website Slap. content, or um, you can have paid ads blacklisted for different reasons for using um, trademark branding and different things like that when you're not supposed to. But as far as Google Slapping, uh, is that a movie? Did they make a movie about that? <laughs> so. Um, so, so again, when you, when you fill this out, you need to realize that, that people may be on their phone, they may be on their tablet, they may be on their computer, and so you want to put images that are in different formats and different shapes and things, and so the, the content is relevant for, for what you're doing. Right now, the split um, between cell phone usage and desktop usage is about 60-40, so about 60% of people are using phones for this type of search, and 40% are using desktops. Of the what we call desktop, some of that is actually tablet use, so it's kind of muddled a little bit. So, um, so and tablets, you don't know, you know, it could show up as a desktop or or a mobile device. So, um, I'm going to skip that because that takes too long and we're pressed for time. So, um, so this is how you kind of get started with with looking at your Google business listing. So you're going to want to go to um, gybo.com forward slash business, okay? And d don't worry about taking notes on this. If you've left your email address upstairs when you registered, I'm gonna have um, Pam send out the slides to everybody. So, the, you know, none of this is proprietary or secret. I guess some of it is, like my phone number, but. <laughs> so, so you go here first, and so what you're gonna do is you're gonna put in your business name and the city that you're located in, and so this is important because this is how Google's going to start to to search through to see if your if your listing is there. So the next page you're going to get to um, is like this, and so there's basically three different options. So so you know, great work. You're already you've already claimed your listing, um, and so you're good to go basically. You know, and it gives you the ability to go in and add more content, more photos and videos and different things like that. The other option is that the Google listing's there but you haven't claimed it yet. So somehow Google's gotten a hold of your business information, but you haven't gone out and nabbed it and say, hey, this belongs to me. The, um, the third option is, is they don't have any listing for you out there. And so, um, so this is probably the most common with small businesses is there's some information out there. Um, it doesn't have, you know, your hours of operation, different things like that, but, um, but this is probably where a lot of you are in with small businesses. You just need to, you need to grab a hold of it and claim your listing. Any questions? Okay. Um, so once you get to that point, what you need to do is um, tie that listing to a Google account. And so you don't have to necessarily have a Gmail address to do this. Um, if you're a business owner, I would make sure that it is your email address, don't let your receptionist do this because your receptionist not, might not be with you in a year and she'll own your Google listing. 
So um, he or she, sorry. Um, so, um, so when you get to this, you basically, in order to claim it, you put in your email address that you're going to want to tie the account to. If you don't have a Gmail account set up, you click here and it'll let you put like a Yahoo or if any of you have like an AOL email or something like that. So, um, so next up, you go in, um, you, um, you basically put in more information about your business here. Um, if it's not there, you can put in information that talks about your address, talks, talk about your website, hours of operation. Those are all really important. 60% um, of searches when people are searching on their phone, the main thing that they're looking for is your business hours or looking for your website. And so you want to make sure that that information is there for them to be able to find it because it's really important there. Again, Google or Google's calling these moments. You've got to have the right information at the moment the consumer's making that decision. Um, so again, you enter in, um, you'll have categories here. So in this case, it's a bakery. But you want to select from the, the um, categories that Google has in place. You want to try to describe best what your business is. So you may be a bakery, but you're also a coffee shop, and you're also um, a restaurant, and you're also a um, meeting venue or something like that. So you can put five different categories in here for your, for your business. So you want to classify as much as you can because, again, Google's going to use that information to serve up your business as people are doing searches in your area. So this is probably one of the most critical steps to make sure you're classified correctly. Um, Google will kind of interpret from there. So if you have it just way out of line, then you're, you're going to show up for some weird things. So you want to make sure you try to classify this. Don't try to freeform this. Like if you put... Um, if you put non-GMO bakery or if you type um, gluten-free bakery, um, you're not going to show up. You want to make sure that you use the Google classifications for those, for those categories so you'll show up more often. You can use some other things I'll show you in a minute to do that kind of stuff. So um, here is where you go in and you specify whether, whether you um, work out of a, of a storefront. So a lot of you actually have a, an office or a storefront that you work out of. But if you do um, home service, you may not want people showing up at your home office and knocking on your door to, to have you do something. So, so this is where you would specify whether or not you do business at your, at your home or, or office or whether you service a certain radius or area. So you can also use this, um, you know, let's say it's a 50 mile radius. This is actually kind of difficult in, in the St. George area because if you put a 50 mile radius, you're serving like the Arizona Strip and Mesquite and some people aren't licensed to do business there. So if you're in that category, you may want to put in specific cities. So put in Hurricane and Leverkin and Santa Clara Ivins, Washington City, St. George, Cedar City, that kind of thing. So, um, so this is important again because when somebody's searching for a plumber in a specific geography, this is where you're telling Google where you're located. So it's, it's super critical and again, um, you also have the option, if you do, let's say that you're, um, you're a plumbing contractor and you service a 50 mile radius, but you also sell plumbing supplies from your location, they've added so now you can have another checkbox. So I service a 50 mile area, but I also serve customers at home. So that's a new thing. So if, um, if you're in one of those weird type businesses where you have done this before and you've done a radius, now you have the ability to select both which is, I think, added about three months ago. So. so the next step after you've kind of put in all this information um, is that you have to, of course, select Google's terms and conditions, sign your life away, you know, sign your soul to the devil, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then from there, you get to um, a verification page. So the verification page on this, um, most people will do it by telephone. Um, and you need to make sure that the telephone number that was on your listing that you have access to it that second because what will happen if you verify it, it'll call that number right away. So if you're at your friend's house and you're, no one's at your office and the phone's going to ring, you're not going to be able to verify it. So make sure that you have access to whatever number that you've got the second you push this button. You can also do it by mail. Um, if you've changed too much of the listing, 
Um, so if you've changed like the addre address that's located in the listing or you've changed the phone number or too much stuff, Google gets a little bit freaked out about that. So they may force you to do it by mail. The postcards come in about a week. So they say 10 days, but it's five business days or so. Um, or you can click verify later. So I'll give you a code that you can use. Yeah. I, I don't know. I haven't run into that yet. Do you have the, the new 385 or whatever the new? Oh, I, I worked for a mortgage lender here in town uh, before I came over to Finley, and we actually did this. And uh, he had a, a 253 number. And uh, so we ended up having to just do it straight by mail. Yeah. So again, did you change the phone number that was on a listing that was already out there? He, he moved down from Washington, and so uh, we actually set it up fresh here, and because of the fact that he had a different area code that wanted yeah. to get by mail. So, so brand new listings, too, they'll treat a little bit differently depending on what type of business that you're in. Um, they want to just verify what, and the, and the reason, does anybody know why they do this? Any guesses? So the guy in Pakistan can't. So your competitor's not uh, maybe that's, that's the main thing, is they don't want, they don't want Bob the plumber to grab Sam the plumber's listing and change the phone number so when somebody's looking for one business that directs to you. So they're just trying to verify that you are who you say you are and it's to protect you. So it may take a week, but it, it's important that you do it. So any other questions on this? Okay. Um, so since you've come to this seminar, you can also not do the telephone or the postcard. If you go to um, GYBO on the map, and you've claimed your, your Google listing, you can kind of backdoor it since you've been at this kind of super secret, you know, communal type learning session. So, um, and you'll be able to go in basically and exabyte your listing that way. So um, again, don't worry about taking pictures. I'll send you all the slides. So next, let's look at kind of what, what makes up Google My Business. So um, if, if, you, um, if you really, take time to fill this out and look at it. It really helps so that people take you more seriously. So 38% um, more likely to have searchers vis visit your location. And so what that means is that they, they found you on, the, on your Google My Business listing. They're 38% more likely than to walk into your storefront in order to, to do business with you. So that's important to know. So 29% um, so more likely to consider doing, making a purchase. So again, it just, it takes your online reputation and just bumps it up a little bit so people are more likely to do business with you. So there is a, an Android um, and an Apple app that you can use in order to update your Google business listing. Um, it's fairly easy to access without the app, but I think they have some more bells and whistles that you can use in order to upload photos and things directly from the app. Great ringer. Um, so, um, so really this needs to be a living, breathing thing. So you don't want it to just set stagnant out there. Your hours of operation change, your holiday schedule changes. And so you want to make sure that you, you keep this so that it's, it's updated regularly and so that it has current information. There's a lot of um, businesses that have um, their hours change and customers are knocking on their door because Google says they're open when they're really closed at five instead of eight o'clock. And so just make sure that you take this seriously because consumers are using it really, really often to, to get in touch with you. Any questions? They charge you, uh, uh, Google charges for doing this? Nope. No? No. So Google wants this information on there because they want a consumer when they have a question about something they want Google to be the place that you know that you're going to find the answer you're looking for. And that's, that was that relevant and authoritative. They want to give you what you're looking for um, because then you'll come back again. And they make their revenue from the advertisers that, that are at the top of the page. And so again, they want those to be relevant also. They want it to be a good consumer experience is really what they built the whole search engine around. Yeah. To, to build it out like what I've shown you so far. Um, if your phone number, if you're claiming it through your phone number, I've sat down with customers and in 15 minutes we've gotten this far. 
So it's not, it's not difficult. That's why, I'm, that's why I want you to know about it, because it's not difficult. It's just going through the steps to, to get it done, and then you're there. I mean, then, then you're online. It's not difficult if you don't understand groups. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you my business card, and I'll come over and walk you through it. So, yeah. so, um, so again, you know, add photos. Uh, manage your reviews. Reviews are important. So if you haven't claimed it or if you have claimed your listing, there may be Google reviews that talk about your business. They had a great experience, had an awful experience, whatever it is. Take care of those reviews. I mean, if somebody gave you a great review, thank them. Um, in the hotel industry, it's super important. You know, if you go in and you look at a hotel and they've, um, they've thanked everybody for their feedback, good or bad, that to me shows that the manager of that hotel is taking service seriously. So um, if you get a bad review, um, don't argue with them online. Don't, you know. The best thing to do with a bad review is acknowledge it. Um, thank them for their feedback. Um, talk about the policies that may have caused the problem or the things that you've put in place to fix the issue and then invite them to come back. So now if I see a one-star review and let's say that I went to Menchie's and, or I'm looking at Menchie's and somebody got a, a bad service there, um, I read that their manager said, sorry, you had a bad experience. What we've done now is we've doubled our staff so that you won't have that same issue again. Please come back and check it out. Well, now it's not a one star anymore in your mind, right? Because they fixed it. So just make sure that you take the reviews very seriously because consumers will look at how you're responding and the types of things that you're putting in there. So you'll have the ability to do that by claiming that. You'll go into the, your reviews here, and as the account owner, you'll be able to, to give um, responses to your reviews. Any questions about that? That's usually one somebody has questions about. No? Not Donna? You don't either? You're not heckling me, Donna. Why? I'm waiting. You're waiting? <laughs> waiting for the... <laughs> saving it up. Yeah, so... So, <laughs> in this case, again, when you're looking at hours of operation, you want to make sure that that you put things in because Google will make a guess. Um, if you're uh, a gift shop or something like that, they may assume that an average gift shop is not open on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. So you're going to make sure that you put in your actual hours of operation. Um, and you can do it months in advance if you want to. You can say that I'm closed on Easter and Christmas and Thanksgiving and things like that. So um, just make sure that it's accurate. Um, so photos. Photos are really important. So when you do your Google business listing, it actually opens up so that consumers can post pictures of the food that they got at your restaurant or the outside of your business or different things like that. But you also want to make sure that you put relevant pictures of your products or your services or um, your, if you're a, a plumber, I like picking on plumbers for some reason, but um, your truck, you know, it may be good to show a picture of your truck so you're not you're not in an old beat up pickup truck, you're in a real nice van that's wrapped with your logo and everything. So, um, so pictures are important and all these little bits and pieces Google looks at and the more content that you put on there, it, Google knows that you're taking it seriously. So you wanna put as much stuff in there as you can because it will bump up your, um, how visible you are in these categories from that. Um, so attributes, so um, earlier I was talking about um, non-GMO or uh, gluten-free bakery or different things like that. This gives you the ability to put other types of things about your business in there that maybe weren't in those business categories. And so this is something that's new as well. So you could put um, pets welcome or you could put, um, you know, bring your bottle of wine on Fridays or some, no corkage fee if you're a restaurant. I mean, there's a bunch of different things that you can do in order to just add extra information in there. And so if somebody's looking for a bakery that does non-GMO and you've got it built out in your attributes, it just will make it so that you're found, you're searchable with that information. So any questions about that? Yes. So that part is free for people that's so consumers to see? Mm-hmm. Yep. And, it's, and again, it's searchable. So... Yeah. What was the question? Um, the first question was, um, is this a freeform area so you can type whatever text you want? And yes, it is freeform. And then the other question, what was the other question? Oh, I was just wondering if she 
too much, too many pictures, and so no. I mean, I, there's probably there probably is some sort of limit, um, like a hundred pictures or something like that. But um, but again, consumers can add to this as well. So um, a lot of, of food pictures or pictures of the outside of your store or different things like that. So just realize it's going to happen. Um, uh, wrong way. Question. Yeah. Yep, it's it's yours, so you can do anything you want with it. So I don't know that you need to, but um, you know if you've got a new mix of products or something like that that you'd like to put on your what what's your business? What type of business do you run? My son's business. Okay, what type of business do you run? Electric bike rides. Okay, yeah. So so as you do different um, tours and things, you may want to include different pictures of the tours, and you may want to take down ones that. Uh, maybe aren't as good as, as you get further and further along in this. So, um, so yeah, just make sure that you take care of it because the consumer is going to look at those, and especially for a tourism type thing, they're going to look at the smiles on the people's faces. They're going to look at the type of equipment you have. Is it new? Is it run down? Um, and the scenery that they're going to see when they're there because that's the experience is 90% of it, right? So, so it's important. And you can put video content on, on there as well. So. Um, you can put pictures of your guides, pictures of your staff, um, and Google will let you classify it in different things. So they'll, they'll give you different places that you can put in. Um, these are pictures of my guides. These are pictures of my business. These are pictures of what we sell, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Would you recommend that people have a photo release if you're going to do like a tour or something where you're just randomly taking pictures and then you're going to post them in a business setting? Should you, as a business person, get a release? Yeah, I'm, I'm not an attorney, so I, I don't want to give you any advice. But um, yeah, I, I would consult your attorney. Because again, you might have somebody that comes back later. And, um, I was just thinking of it just preventatively. Yeah. Just making people aware that, hey, we're going to do a little thing. If you have an objection, this is what we're going to do. And, and that's, that's always good. smart to do, yeah. Well, because sometimes you make in your mix who may have real reasons why they would put them at risk maybe for some other reason that they should not have their pictures yep. out there. And it's just Mine is that I'm in the witness protection together. program, so I'm really not supposed to be filmed. But, but yeah, it's, it, and it's just polite. It's polite to let, you know, when you're taking pictures, to let your customers know. Um, and again, it, you, it, there could be some legal ramifications, but I'm not an attorney. Do we have an attorney's office in the house, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I would appreciate somebody letting me know that. I would probably just say yes, it's no big deal. Mm -hmm. But I, as a customer, I appreciate being aware and that yeah. I have the option. Yep. Yeah, I agree with that. I know Facebook is is not as much of an issue. There have been some legal cases with that that it's open domain and so it's not a big deal. But when it's your your business listing, I would just be careful with it. Yeah. If I'm understanding it correctly, once you post one of these business sites, anybody can put a photo up there? Yeah, but you have you have control over it. So um, if you if it's um, outside of Google's um, rules, um, you can actually petition to have it taken down. Same thing with reviews. If it's outside of Google's guidelines, you can petition to have a review taken down, especially for profanity and. But even I, the, the, pick, the question about the photos made me think of it. We're very careful. We're a nonprofit that deals with children in poverty and we mm -hmm. take them shopping in a public place. Mm -hmm. And we're very careful never to take pictures of faces or, you know, we don't want to. Do you, we're paranoid about photos. Do you guys know if there's a way to turn off? Customer photo posting. I don't know if there's a way, um, but like for I mean, I know like for restaurants, like if I go to like Chipotle and I get a really bad meal and I want to take a picture of it, I want other people to see that. That's that type of instance for a nonprofit. I haven't really seen much instances of it being outside of what you would what you wouldn't want as far as pictures of the kids or you know stuff like that. I haven't run into that as much. Um, but it's mostly, you know, for those those restaurants or you know, mechanics or something like that, where those are more relevant. So. Um, 
give me your card and I'll contact Matt Target with Google. He's our he's our okay. helper person and we'll get you an answer on it. So I have a question. I've got my museum pulled up and looking at some of the reviews. Mm -hmm. So are you logged in as the admin? Apparently not, but my question was, how do you know that you're in it because that you don't just pull it up? And how do I get into it then? Um, you're on an Android phone, so I can't help you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Bobby. <laughs> as the museum and not myself, right? Yeah, yeah. That's so just... So just, so. So, so it, that, that needs to be cleared up though because it would be confusing if you have multiple Gmails, which. Yeah, so, so Bobby's involved in several different organizations, so she's got several different um, <laughs> accounts set up, and we struggle with this because I work with her on arts design. So, um, so in, in the case of what, she's, what so she just I talked about, she's not logged in under the admin account for okay, the so Silver Reef Museum. We'll figure it out. Yeah. So I just thought other people yeah. might have the same problem, and so yeah. I thought I'd bring it up. Um, any other questions about about this? Did we talk about this one? Yeah. So reviews, I did talk about. So I have yeah. A okay. So on our data comes from the reviews. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so um, you know how how you s you see where it says was this helpful yeah. when you're reading through reviews. So that has a lot to do with it. It also has to do with the person that's doing the review. Do they do a lot of reviews and are they um, like a power user? Um, it it also has to do with the type of content. Are they using um, names of the people that gave them service and the length of it, that kind of thing. So I Google has all these super algorithm things, I don't know. But I know that the ones that I see that are usually at the top are usually the most helpful. So whatever they're using to figure it out is usually working. So any other questions? You're still not heckling me, Donna. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, so responding to reviews, did I cover that well enough? Yeah. Did everybody understand? OK. Um, so you can share updates. So Google wants you to use this kind of like a Facebook where you put updates out there and you can set up events like if you've got a grand opening event or different things like that. So you can utilize that. Um, again, this, this will go into a little bit more detail when I send you the slides. Um, you can also set up um, text messaging. So if, if you want your customers to be able to text you um, questions, you can set it up so that that text number can be, can be moved around to employees that may be on call or something. So that's kind of a cool thing. So in order to do that, um, you go in and you set up your listing so that, um, I'm pointing to my screen, you can't see that. So, so they can send um, SMS messages directly from here. So. Um, it just is additional ways for people to communicate. Like my kids will not pick up the phone. They're 18 and 21. So if they can text, they'll do it. But if they have to call somebody, they're never going to make a phone call. <laughs> so, um, so just, you know, it, again, giving people the ability to kind of communicate the way they want to. Um, so the other thing to really pay attention to is your Google account will give you the ability to have what's called insights. And so insights will track... Um, the type of um, searches that people are doing that you're, you're showing up in, it'll show you how many of them um, did a click to call to, f to actually call you. It'll um, show you how many people um, looked at the map to find out directions to get to where you're at. Um, it's really important to look at this because um, you need to use that as a driver to, to put more or less information into these listings. And so it also will tell you, you know, how many people from, from Google, uh, Google My Business are going to your website and different things like that. So keep an eye on this because it, it, if, if you're a store location and people aren't doing directions, either, either you don't have the right information there or everybody knows where you're at, you know, your Cafe Rio or something like that. But 
Um, but think about these things when you're looking at insights and use that to kind of direct the information you've got on there. Yes? Uh, actions, what is that? Actions are um, when somebody um, clicks on like a click to call, a form fill, what are other actions, guys? Actions on your, on your on Google your My Business? Um, yeah, it's the, the clicked calls, you know, stuff that all around the number. Yeah. So it's, so it's any, any actionable thing. So they're looking for directions, they're doing a chat, and it just is showing the number of times that consumers are interacting with your listing, with the specifically Google business listing. Um, so you can add managers. Um, be careful with this. Um, so this again, if you've got, um, let's say you've got four employees that work for you, um, you want to first of all set this up so that you're the admin of, of your um, Google My Business page, but you can also set up people so that they are managers or, or communication manager, and that sets the access level that they, that they have. So what you don't want to do is give an employee within your organization owner level access, and this is true for any of your Google platform stuff, your AdWords and um, anything. But um, the reason for this is if somebody gets upset with you, they can basically, since they're an owner, they can kick your access off and then they can do anything that they want with your account. So just be careful with that. Yes? Locations, Cedar City, St. George, Hurricane, Idaho Falls, how does it work with multiple locations? So you can put in multiple locations under the same account. Um, if you need help with it, call me and I'll walk you through it. Okay. Um, any questions on user access level? Yes? The Chamber of Commerce here has a section that has like 100,000 hits a year. Mm -hmm. How does that connect with someone looking for recreational interest? Can, can you on on the chamber, yeah. um, so I I don't know a whole lot about. So on your on your chamber website, he was talking about the number of hits that you have and how it would coordinate back to this Google listing. Well, because we're hit approximately thirty thousand times a month, we're the second largest in the in southern Utah. The city of St. George is the first. Sometimes we're the first, but our search engine optimization goes up. And so I think that um, your question is, how does that relate to Google's mm -hmm. SEO? Yeah, and so they're, they're not gonna be directly correlated. So a chamber is an authoritative site. So having a listing on the chamber, on their business listing, um, Google will go and find that and it points to your website and that will boost your organic listing because you're there. So it's important to be a chamber member, and no, I didn't get paid, but I probably should. <laughs> um, but um, so <laughs> I won an extra cookie on the way up. So, um, so, so anyway, the, this listing is kind of separate, and that's one of those things when I showed you that beginning where it was just a garbled mess of icons of different things that you can advertise in. It's, it's just one more thing that you need to do. So one more question. You can, yeah, so there's, so I just would be careful. I don't know how often your Better Business Bureau rating changes. I don't know either. Yeah, I, I would put it in the free form listing in the attributes, just say um, BBB rated. I wouldn't put what the rating is. I would just let them know that you're on there if they want to go look it up. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. Any more questions on this? No? I'm running short on time, so I'm going to have to blow through really quick. So, so this is kind of um, a list that I've developed on things that you need to do for your website in order to boost your, um, boost your relevancy. I also, did you guys notice there's a little form on the table? If you have a minute, if you can fill that out, we're giving away um, a free website. It's about a $1,500 website that we'll build for you as a first prize. And uh, the second prize, we're doing 100,000 impressions on one of our ad exchanges where we'll build the artwork for you as well, and that's about $150 value. So fill those out for me, and then 
my team will come around and pick those up and then we'll draw at the end. Um, so roadmap to GYBO. This is important. This is, I swear, this is really important. So first thing that you want to do is you want to take your Google account that you just did for Google Maps. You want to use that Google account to set up um, an AdWords account. So you want to make a list of the things that your business does, like the products and services. And I'm going to use plumbers for this because, again, I like to pick on plumbers. So, so the, you need to write down the that you remodel kitchens, you remodel bathrooms, you do drain cl clean out. You also want to list what differentiates you from your competitors. And this is true for any type of business. You want to list what you do and what sets you apart from other people in town. These are important. So, um, so the next thing you do is you go into your Google AdWords account that you're going to build out. And you want to go into what's called the keyword planner. So the keyword planner is kind of your little secret access door into the back side of Google. To they'll tell you what's searched for, what words are used to search for. So this is important because now you take that list of things that you do and you're going to put them into the Google keyword planner and Google's going to come back and tell you how often plumbing is searched and plumbers and water heaters and supplies and repiping and sewers and drains. And now they've told you, you can click on this like an Excel spreadsheet, click on the top, it will reorder them from the highest searched terms to the lowest searched terms. And so this is, is probably one of the most digitally critical thing for you, and I call it your secret list. So the reason this is important is now Google has just told you that of the things that you do for a living, what's searched most often. So that's super critical for you to know. So the next step, what you want to do with that is you want to go into your website. If you already have a website, if you're having a website built, you want to try as best as possible to take drain clean out, um, water heaters, and home remodeling, whatever it is, and put those into these, what are called your, your, your pages or your page titles. So. That's important because you want that person, when they're searching for, for a remodeling plumber, you want to have a page on your website that all it talks about is a plumber that does remodeling, right? So now you're giving the consumer exactly what is searched for regularly. And so it's important to build your structure out that way. Um, next thing that you want to do is look at the way that your website page titles are set up. So the easiest way to do it is to, is to look at the web page that you have. You right click with your mouse and you, you say view source. It'll be one of the options when you right click. And it'll bring up this nerd speak stuff. Looks like gibberish. If you, um, if you don't like that, if that's too crazy hard, you can hover your mouse over the top of your browser and it will tell you what the, the page title is. So this is also critical. So you want to have your page title say um, the, who you are, the product or service that's shown on that page, which again, we hopefully we've broken it down into the magic list that you do um, remodeling. And another critical one is where you're at. Okay, so now you've told Google this is the most important thing for search engine optimization is your page title. So you've told them what's on that page, like what you're doing on that page, where you're at, and who you are. Okay, so super critical. Any questions on that? I, again, I'm short on time, so I'm going to blaze through these real quick. Um, the next thing you want to do is you want to take the pages that you've created now from that secret list, and you want to fill out information that is all relevant to that vertical or that specific type of business that you're advertising on that page. So for your tours, you're in, is it Colob? Is that where you're at with your bicycle tours? So you want to have, you know, a page that talks about specifically about Colob and you want to have one that talks about maybe adjacent areas and maybe talk about your guides and different things like that. But you want to base it again on the things that people are searching for. And on your, you're kind of a weird business, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it specific. Unique. Sorry, sorry, unique, odd, outside of the norm. <laughs> There, that's the heckle that we were waiting for. Um, so, so you're a little bit different. So you might use general tourism type terms and try to kind of fit your page structure into that. 
So, you have bicycles in there too, because that's mm -hmm. popular. Mm -hmm. But the, what's unique is that they're electric bicycles. I do not want to have to pedal. <laughs> I mean, do I look like I want to pedal? <laughs> I do not want to pedal. So, <laughs> so okay. So again, fill as much content as you can, and this is where you want to look at um, the the words that you're using. You want to look for singular use. So plumber, plumbers, plumbing different variations of those words so that they're repeated on the page so that it's relevant to the content that you hope to be found for. So um, the next step is claiming, which, you know, if you followed the first part of my presentation, you're already done with that. So um, you want to make sure that you do the same thing that I explained for Google on Apple Maps. So on your iPhone, you can go to the map system and you can claim your listing there, very similar to what Google is. You also want to do Bing Maps. Does anybody use Bing? There's one, two, two and a half, three. <laughs> um, <so laughs>. Then there's probably those of us that don't know that we're using Bing, but we've got it set up. So, um, so you want to go in and so you want to go in and do all those. So you want to put the same type of information in the Apple page and in the Bing Maps page. Also, Yelp is is a good one. Um, some of the yellow page sites may be good for you to do so that there's information in those. Um, you want to have a way that you ask for reviews. So have some sort of way, if it's, if it's person to person, you want to ask a client to review you. I've got a lot of clients right now that will send out a teaser email to all their clients and say, how likely are you to, to refer to me at a friend one through 10? And if they're very likely, now they send them a second email that says, will you please review me on Google? So if they're not likely to, to, to um, refer you to a friend, then of course you don't want to necessarily ask them to review you, right? So you're kind of loading the deck a little bit. But again, asking for reviews are important. So this, this particular plumber that I've been picking on, um, you know, he shows up, he shows up really well on, on this in Phoenix. And you, I mean, there's hundreds of uh, plumbers in Phoenix. He's got 618 reviews with a 4.7 star. So that's somebody that you would do business with, right? Question? Mm -hmm. Real. Whereas if you have 58 five stars, it's probably everyone in the business. Right. So yeah. So <laughs> so the one thing to remember though too is is one unhappy customer one is very likely to write a bad review to you. A hundred happy customers, you still might only get one good review. So you want to make sure that you're asking, or it's not going to happen. You can't incentivize it. Don't offer them a hundred dollar gift card. Don't don't try to find any way to incentivize it. Don't give them a free dessert or anything because if Google finds out, they'll, what do you call it? Google slap you? <laughs> Google slap you. Yeah. Um, so um, step seven is, um, step seven is you want to, to build out your social media. And so, um, so on social media, you want to, to look at the social media where you know that your clients are going to be. So if your client, if let's say that your, um, your average client is a 14 to 18 year old kid, Facebook is not where you want to be posting. They hate Facebook, you know, it's Snapchat or, or something else, maybe Instagram. But you want to make sure that you find the social media that your clients are on. If you're a business to business business, so you're, if you're a business that concentrates on selling to businesses, you want to use LinkedIn. Um, if, you, if you sell to people between the ages of like 40 and 155, Facebook is your group. That's kind of, my, my kids are, have evacuated that. But, um, so you want to make sure that you're putting relevant content out there. The other thing, if you do giveaways um, on your Facebook page, you want to make it so that it, the, the only your ideal client is going to want it. So if you're the heckler, Donna back there, that works at Richens Eye Center, you don't want to give away an iPad, right? Because I want an iPad. Do you want an iPad? Sure. Yeah. So, but do you need LASIK surgery? No. Yeah. So, and I don't either because I had it done 10 years ago. So, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Now she's talking about me. I need the cataract surgery. So, but, um, so, so again, be careful. So, 
So in this case, I'm picking on Boulevard Home Furnishings. So their, their ideal client that they're trying to reach is a 25 to 55 year old woman, right? So that, that's who makes all the decisions about buying furniture. I know I have no say in it. But um, <laughs> so the, in this case, they're basically, the post that they put out there is, um, they have a quick getaway, um, comment on your favorite thing about your mom, and you could win two tickets to a women's expo. So again, I mean, it's, it's talking about women and it's talking about moms and it's a giveaway to a women's expo. So make sure that that type of stuff is relevant to, to your ideal client. So if you're a dentist, give away dental stuff. If you're an eye clinic, give away eye stuff. You know, what your ideal client. If you're a plumber, give away plumbing stuff. You know, you don't want something that's not related. Um, so then you want to also look at where your ideal client spends their, spend their time. Do they spend a lot of time on Pinterest? Do they spend a lot of time on weather apps or reading the news? And so that's where you kind of have to crawl into your customer's head and who are they and where are they at. And you want to put relevant advertising on those specific platforms where they're going to be. So the last and probably the most important step in this is to look at the analytics within Google um, to look at the type of traffic that's coming to your site. So when you build a site, um, or if you have a site, you want to make sure that you have Google Analytics put on your site. It's free. It's super simple just to drop the H HTML code and link it to your Google account. But it will tell you um, age of who's on your site. It will show you how many people are on, on the site at that exact moment in time. It'll tell you what country, what state, what city they're from. It'll tell you if they're on an Android phone, like Bobby, <laughs> or an Apple phone, like all the rest of us. And, um, <laughs> You know, so it, it'll break down the demographic of who's there, but it'll also tell you the search terms that people are using to get to your site and where they're coming from, whether it's from Facebook or whether it's from Instagram or whether it's from Google or whether it's from your Google business listing. And so you can use that, you, you can use that information. If people are coming from Google and they're just coming from searching for water heaters and you want to sell more kitchen bathroom remodeling, you've got work to do. So. So again, use this to decide when you go back to step one, you look at your keywords over again and see if you've got the right mix and the right concentration on things. And you go back through your site structure again. You go back through social media. And so you continue to re repeat these steps over and over again in order to make sure you're, you're on track. Google stock is on Google. Is it? <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Good oh yeah, there you go. So. so <laughs> Google, Google a Google slap, or being a Google slap, and see see what you find. So, so quickly to wrap up, kind of my nine step thing: um, list your products and services. Look at your unique selling proposition or your differentiators. Um, use Google AdWords to to build out a keyword list or your secret list. Guard that list with your life. Put it on a sticky note. Stick it on the side of your computer. Um, name your pages. Um, who you are, what the product or service is, and where you're at. Um, create web page content that um, has variations of all those secret word lists. Um, claim your map listings. Um, use social media to engage your client. Give them unique um, information about what you do. Don't try to sell them all the time. It's a one in six. Sell one time for every six relevant posts you give them. Um, then pay only for advertising where, you're, where your clients spend their time. Again, don't spend money on Facebook if you're trying to sell to a 14 to 18 year old kid, you're wasting your money. And then use your analytics to guide how each of these steps are working for you. So that was a ton of information. Did I end on time? Over. Yep.